Welcome everybody. And we're going to talk today about reading and writing city GML data. So yeah, so my name is Don Murray. I'm with co-founder of Save Software. Um, I've been, you know, one of the, I'm the guy who professes to love XML and I do, and so does Dean. Um, and Dean and I have worked together for well over 10 years. Dean's got his trusty Jason mug there. And, um, and um, you know, it's a real treat to do this with Dean. And um, I think for you out in the audience, you should know, you know, Dean is, I would say, a world-class expert in this field. Um, we're lucky to have him at SAFE and he drives our, um, you know, our XML and um, CDGML and all things related to XML and JSON along with, um, you know, Juan and the amazing development team, you know, and of course we have other folks, we have Trent and others. Um, but today it's really a treat to, Dean will wow you with his knowledge and, um, you can go as deep or as broad as you want with Dean. So right out of the gate, um, this is not a simple topic, XCity GML, very, very rich data model and um, used in very many different ways. And so if you do want to chat at, you know, after the webinar or anything, please do reach out to us. And the easiest way is info at safe.com. And, um, and the person who monitors that, if you say, you know, if you say, hey, Dean, I want to talk about City GML, they'll make sure that it gets to to Dean. So, uh, so with that, um, we will let let you go, and we're going to turn off our webcams now. And, okay, um, so I'll do that. Okay, and um, yeah, so here's the agenda. First of all, we're going to set Dean's going to set the scene, and then we'll talk about CDGML, you know, and things like how to use it for, as part of um, building your digital twin, um, City JSON and City GML. I'd say if we don't talk about them versus each other. We support them both equally and are committed to both. And so we'll talk about the strengths and um, of each of them. Um, and then we'll, we'll look at some of the city typical city GML workflows that we've seen at SAFE. And it is vast. So there's no way we can possibly um, talk about them all here. And then, we, then, then we're going to talk about you know, indoor um, building information models, um, 3D. And then there's just a, a slew of demos that Dean's going to go over very, very quickly some trends and conclusions and next steps. So we will go quickly. The goal here is to show you what, what we can do and what is being done with CityGML. Um, do reach out to us um, after or any time and we can show you how. And uh, again, Dean is an amazing resource um, that you get when you, um, you uh, work with our stuff. So yeah, so, okay. So setting the scene um, for, you know, um, CityGML, where does it play? Um, the world of 3D um, data, of course, it is, it is um, you know, a data trans transfer format, a way of representing 3D data. Building, in, we're gonna talk about building information models and GeoBIM, you know, and really identify where does city GML play? Um, what are its strengths and what are its um, limitations? So Dean, take it away. Yeah, thanks a lot, Don, for setting the scene there. And uh, also for the, the great uh, leadership and vision that you provide, because a lot of the stuff that we're working with now is decades in the making in terms of our support for, um, you know, raster for 3D and emerging things like GeoBIM and um, indoors. So a lot of, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, as Don, as Don said. So everyone, just hang on to your seats. I've uh if you do feel dizzy just close your eyes for a minute and then reopen and then you should be okay uh and anything that we have to skim over really quick uh the deck and the resources will be available later uh so jumping right in uh i think it's important to have a good look at the context of city gml what is it designed for and what isn't it like what are some of its limitations and that you know say if we like to be just like data inspector, we show you what you really have. We don't want to just make a pretty picture, but I have help you understand the underlying data. And uh, so here it's, you know, again, it's also important to understand the design intent of a particular standard, because if you're using it in a way that it wasn't designed for, uh, you're likely to run into problems. So off the top, CDGML is uh, an exchange format. It's uh, maintained by the OGC, Open Geospatial Consortium. Uh, they've kind of taken over management of that. And uh, it's for 3D GIS data, you could call it BIM Lite. Um, and so it's it's an object-oriented data model with different levels of detail. It's a lot more than just a pretty picture or 3D. If you just want 3D, you can do 3D PDF or SketchUp. 
but that object model and the semantics underneath it really allow it to be very useful for city management applications, facilities management, uh, disaster response, emergency management, uh, transportation, utilities, infrastructure, all that good stuff. All everything that uh, we talk about, uh, for example, when we talk about digital twin. So that's some of the strengths. Um, the limitations are it's not optimized for storage. Uh, so you try to put your whole city in there without any kind of indexing or tiling, and you're gonna uh, you're gonna run into problems. So it is XML. There's no spatial index. It's also a very complex data model. So you need uh, robust tools to work with it, uh, data model oriented tools like FME uh, that can handle it. Uh, it's also not client oriented. Uh, so you st stream a big city GML file to somebody's cell phone and it's just not gonna, it's not gonna happen. It's just gonna fall over. So that's some of the limitations. And with that in mind, uh, just a little bit a brief background. Uh, these are the folks at Carl's Ruhr Institute technology. Um, they've got a lot of resources and been doing city GML for a long time. So there's a, a lot of modules. I won't get into all the details, uh, but you can see that there's these thematic modules and those have been extended over time. And then besides the various building parts, there's semantics and geometry behind those. So you can see a particular window or door uh, has a, there's, it's in it's the semantics in the data model and then a particular type of geometry. And then the LOD concept, uh, there's lots of acronyms here. So that's level of detail. It can be anything from 2D, which is that flat one on the left, to highly detailed on the right. So let's talk quickly about uh, digital twin. It's a bit of a buzzword out there. Uh, a lot of people mean different things by it. Uh, there's the Wikipedia definition. It's really a, a digital representation of, of the real world. And obviously there's there's trade-offs with giving more detail. If you model everything in the real world, then you've just duplicated the whole world, which is kind of unwieldy. So city GML is a, is a rich object model, which really suits that city scale and it's aptly named. And uh, it, it also serves as a bridge between GIS and BIM. BIM can be a lot more detailed at the building level down to let's say a doorknob and GIS might cover a whole country. So uh, city GML is a good interface between those, those different scales. And uh, it does, the semantic richness does allow a lot of detailed modeling of the various um, building component and city furniture and vegetation and whatnot. A quick comparison, you notice my JSON mug there. So city JSON has emerged in the last couple of years. Uh, it's, there's certainly some advantages to it. It's smaller. Uh, it doesn't have, you don't have to worry about application schema and namespaces. It's a simpler geometry and it's better for thinner clients, but on the flip side, uh, it doesn't have the built-in validation that you get with, with XML and Gmail. And the uh, application domain extension extensibility is not, you know, you don't, you don't get that uh, via the app schema the way you would with GML. Um, and so I think GML is still a more comprehensive implementation. It's just been around longer. So uh, here are just very briefly some workflows, and we'll look at this in more detail when we get into the demos. But obviously, we've got data inspection, uh, creating 3D data from 2D. You basically have to be able to do that in both directions. Uh, extrusion, database loading, we mentioned BIM to GIS, and then just conversion between different um, uh, 3D GIS formats and going out to client formats. So we'll see some examples of each of those. Uh, just a little bit about the platform. Today we will be spending most of our time in desktop, uh, but certainly anything that we're looking at could be published to server, uh, server in the cloud on AWS, and consumed by mobile devices or you know web apps. So just keep in mind this entire platform, and that once you develop some of these very complex workflows. Um, Push of a button or simply a, an automated system service could invoke that uh, workflow and, and be fully automated. So just keep that in mind. Now, in terms of context, we're, we're here right in the middle where it says 3D and BIM. That's kind of where we adopted support for city GML. 
So right after raster there and, and you know, whereas you see raster and web. So you can see that we've been supporting uh, CDGML in some flavor for over 15 years. And uh, so, yeah, we're not new to the game. Um, certainly there's a lot, a lot has happened since then. And so ultimately what we're doing here is, you know, why we do what we do, give people access to their data and in particular support decision-making. Uh, so the richer the data underneath uh, the reporting tools that, and the analytical tools that are there, so for example, for city managers, the better decisions they can make, both in terms of, let's say, long-term planning and short-term response. Uh, desktop is really your no-code solution for data modeling. You just drag and drop the data sources and, and uh, various functions or transformers and weave your data together to produce the result you're looking for. So uh, just a few words on recent uh, highlights. Let me just keep track of the time here. Um, so you've you heard a few mentions of City JSON. So that uh, we added support back about a year and a half ago, two years. And uh, City GML version three, I've got some examples of that today. Uh, our GML core has been so enhanced and developed that we can support most of City GML version three just with the GML reader. Um, there's a few limitations there, like appearances that are not fully supported yet, and we're working on that right now, and that should be out in about a quarter or so. Um, X-Link, so X-Link geometry, that's geometry by reference. Um, and then multiple, like being able to select LOD on read, because in the past, you just have to read everything and then throw away what you don't want, which is a bit wasteful. And uh, overall, improved geometry support. I'll have to give a nod to Joel and Juan because uh, if you're talking about improved support, you'll see I'm actually running the latest uh, beta 2022.0 uh, build uh, 22270, was, which just went up, and that actually doubled my load speed for uh, textured uh, CDGML. So that's pretty impressive. And last but not least here, OGC certification. So we've got uh, half a dozen or so standards we've been certified for, and that's through their test suite. So that's an official certification process. Uh, we've off, we've long supported OGC standards, but this is the first time, just a you know half a year ago, that we actually went through all the hoops to be officially certified. So uh, there isn't a test suite yet for City GML. When there is, we will make sure uh, we address that. Um, other in the wider context of GeoBIM, uh, we're continually improving our Revit and IFC uh, reading and IFC writing. Um, more destination format improvements for things like I3S. We're working on Cesium right now, some great improvements there. And uh, yeah, new GeoBIM formats are coming all the time, uh, as well as things like indoor mapping and 3D formats, you know, like uh, Unreal and USD XR. Etc. So there's a long list there, uh, and and again, uh, we'll come back to this. But the it's not just about formats; it's the processing, and so the the sophistication and depth that we have in tools like Geometry Validator and uh, Clipper uh, really are what make all these transforms possible. So uh, we're through the some of the intro stuff here. We can dive in and look at some demos. Uh, some of these I will flip through uh, the overview of the slides on, and then uh, and then when we get to Q and A, uh, you know, things that are a little more time consuming, I might run those in the background. But we'll we'll see how far how quick uh, how many of these we can cover. Uh, so we're going to start off with data inspection, a uh, quick look at some City GML version three, and then uh, publishing to a client format. Those are some simpler workflows, and then we'll dive into a bit more detail uh, about work that we've done on GeoBIM Benchmark with the University of Delft, and also some uh, OGC work we've done, for example, the indoor pilot. Mm -hmm. And then we've got some great examples of uh, FME deployed on FME server to support uh, geoportals um, across, uh, in most cases, across Europe. And I have a few comments about uh, database loading as well. Okay, so, Here's uh, some examples. Uh, <clears throat> first off, we have Montreal here. This is um, a great free data set we'll have a link to at the end. Uh, and so you can basically download tiles of 
a very rich, well, LED2 data. And I just wanted to highlight a few things here. You can see the city GML modules, wall, roof, and building on the left. And, uh, and then I've selected a particular building here where it's just the wall surface and you can see all the details there. And just a note that, again, data inspector is not really meant to be a, a, a mapping or simply a rendering tool. We, we show you all the components of the geometry and the various properties. And so those properties are, are essential to comply with, with standard and allow, and allow the, all the data model to work. And here's a similar um, example. I think this is also uh, Montreal and this is, this is using city JSON. So again, it's a bit of a simpler data structure, uh, not quite as much attribution or in terms of like list objects and whatnot. So it's a, it's a bit flatter of a data model. And here's uh, city JSON railways. So it's, it's the, that old standard railway data set you might have seen for city GML implemented in city JSON. And uh, here we have geometry by reference. So this is something that uh, evolved in the, the couple of years ago, and you could see that the uh, X-Link href for the XML geeks there, uh, we're basically composing the solid from the linked faces so that are referenced by these uh, X-Links here. And just a note here, LOD to read, that's that new parameter. If you haven't updated your FME, that's, that's a handy one to have. So let me just pop up a couple of examples here here's just a few this this uh, we'll look at this data set a bit later but this is just an example of a city gml um, model that was derived from ifc mm -hmm. and uh oh yeah for city gml3 we'll come back to this in a minute this is a, a pretty cool data set so you can see it's geo-referenced and then we can kind of fly in here and spin this thing around and uh, so it's a fairly rich data model where we can look at each of those, the, the lanes and the curves of the lanes. And you could see how this could be used for, uh, for navigation. Um, and ultimately, not just for navigation, but also for autonomous driving. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. So just a few words about City Gmail 3. Uh, it's more flexible in terms of the uh, level of detail. Uh, it supports time, time spans, and versioning. You could think of it as somewhat of a BIM light in that it, uh, it has support for uh, spaces. So it's better interoperability with IFC. Uh, it's indoor friendly in the sense that it has stories similar to levels, which are useful for integrating with IMDF and, and indoor GML. And uh, it has a lot of improvements for things, classes like transportation that you just saw. So there's more information there. And here's just a few of the screenshots. You can see by the namespace that, that we're supporting City GML uh, version 3. This is just to remember using the GML core as opposed to the uh, city GML2 reader. And there's all the generic, generic attributes there, let's say like max speed and whatnot. So the data model has been extended for, for a number of those types of applications. Uh, now I'm gonna look at a basic workflow, just going from city GML to PDF. And uh, what's cool about this is out of the box, you can just drag and drop city gmail to pdf and get a result so you can get a useful result just from a default translation and then if you want to get a little bit richer uh so that so yeah sorry back up here this this snapshot here is just based on the default translation mm -hmm. and then um uh with a little bit more in uh enrichment uh we're able to kind of have uh, uh, better structured result. I'll just show you that in terms of the workspace. 
So here, here's the actual workspace that, um, yeah, I can go ahead and run this. Just take a second. So here you can see what we're doing is we do some deaggregation. The whole idea of this section here uh, is that PDF prefers meshes to uh, multi-surfaces. It's just more efficient way for it to render. And so we um, basically decompose those multi-surfaces, re-triangulate them and build meshes. And then we group by uh, the parent ID, which is effectively the building ID. Mm -hmm. And then on the uh, output side, uh, we just basically uh, expose some additional attributes and uh, we have to use the geometry property setter. I kind of felt found out the hard way because um, 3D PDF actually doesn't uh, render these fields here. You actually need to set um, whichever properties you want on, on, the, on the picture. And so the output, while that's running here, I'll just show you what the output looks like. You can see that I can click on a specific building and I get the, the building ID. So this is, a, this is essentially the building object and then the underlying surface member. And so you can, you can see all the way down to which JPEG was used for that building mm -hmm. the, and for the, that particular face. And you can see um, the building ID number and GML IDs. So, <clears throat> right. Yeah. So that's a great way of sharing, you know, 3D models with, with folks because everybody has some um, Acrobat reader. So you can see it's a fairly, fairly rich and, you know, even on, on, you know, a laptop like mine, you can, uh, PDF, 3D PDF performs quite well. Yeah. So I'm not going to wait for this to, to finish. It's just turning away, but that's mm -hmm. basically, yeah. Taking from uh, city Gmail to PDF. Yep. Yeah. So moving on. So just a few words about GeoBIM Benchmark. Uh, it was a test bed that we participated in uh, about two years ago, back in late 2019 and into 2020. And uh, it was really a great opportunity uh, to interact with, with others in, in the industry, in the GeoBIM world, and, and work with some real world, fairly large data sets kind of kick the tires with our reading and writing and and how we interpret the standard and their basic goal was to both figure out you know how well are the standards supported by the tools as well as what were some of the problems in the standard uh that made it difficult to support so sometimes standards can be a bit ambiguous and there can be uh you know different interpretations so I would say since this uh, benchmark was run, we've made improvements to FME based on this, as well as there's been evolution in, in the standards. So I think it's a good win-win that way. Just a few quick words about IFC versus CDGML. Um, you know, IFC is obviously it's a it's a leading BIM format along with with Revit, uh, and it's really focused, uh, you know, at the building level, and it's highly detailed. Uh, parametric model, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. it's uh, founded by or maintained by Building Smart, and uh, City GML is is supported by the OGC, and uh, it's it's a bit more you could say BIM light or GIS oriented in the sense of, of the kind of scale, so it doesn't have quite as much uh, detail as IFC. And here's just an example of, for example, the boundary representation. So in IFC we have solids representing a wall and you could have um these is you know typically some of the feature types you're working with um so it's a constructive solid geometry uh, representation and in uh, cgml it's a boundary rep and so you have to think about that when you want to move data from one to the other how are we going to take apart these solids to derive those surfaces and so it, it, you have to get fairly deep in terms of the geometry representation in order to handle that. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the tasks was just working with CDGML and uh, it, it was interesting that uh, from the participants there, I mean, there were a few open source tools, but a lot of people 
that we're running tests, be it with ArcGIS or, or FME. Ultimately, many of them were, you know, FME was one of the leading tools to work with CityGML, for sure. And, uh, you know, we had a few challenges here and there, but some of it was just down to, um, you know, some bad source data and the geometry validator was really key with isolating those kind of issues. Yeah. So there's some very large data sets, uh, you know, a third of a million uh, buildings in Amsterdam. And here uh, we're just looking again at using geometry validator for, for quality assurance. And here are some of the, the output data sets that were uh, tested and, and we kind of had to round trip these and make sure we didn't, you know, weren't losing, compromising the semantics or lo losing any of the features. And also looked at uh, georeferencing. We'll get a little bit more into IFC to CDGML conversion in a minute. And here, here are uh, a couple of the data sets that we worked with converting from in task four, we did the conversion from IFC to, to city GML. And so I wanted to, I kind of popped that up briefly earlier. I wanted to highlight this. So this, this is uh, the IFC, one of the IFC test data sets we used in that benchmark. And you can see it's a highly detailed model. And, uh, you know, we could turn off, take, take off the roof and you can see the detail inside and we can click on a door here and you can see how that's all modeled with IFC door and mm -hmm. then passing all that through FME, this is the result in, in uh, city GML. So you can see that we're doing a pretty good job of preserving everything. I can do the same thing. I can turn off that roof surface. You can see what's inside and I can, uh, Click on the door, and now that IFC door has just become um, CDGML door. And you can see all of the the rich uh, traits and attribution uh, within yeah. that object model. So um, that's yeah. That there's not. It, it's one thing to do a conversion and just make a big mesh out of it, but to preserve yeah. that structure is not uh, trivial. Yeah. So moving on. That's great. So uh, just to, I don't want to spend too much time. I know we've got a lot to cover. Uh, so there's we we have a landing page. If we have more information. You can you can see on this. There's also a white paper published. So we'll probably circulate a link to that. The the net net was uh, we do a really good job of the BIM to GIS workflow. That's the most commonly used, and we can certainly do BIM to BIM and GIS to GIS. The challenge really comes going from GIS to BIM because that is going from, you know, few to many. You have, you know, mm -hmm. you're going from less detail to more detail. You have to make a lot of assumptions when you do that. Yeah. And then another project that we worked on recently uh, was the indoor mapping pilot. Just a few words about indoor. Uh, you know, Don Don has certainly been uh, shown a lot of uh, leadership and interest in this. So. There's the OGC IMDF uh, standard developed initially by Apple and Arches Indoors. They've, they've, uh, Esri has invested a lot uh, developing infrastructure for indoors and then uh, OGC standards like Indoor GML. So there's a lot of activity. And, and you know, we spend 90% of our time indoors. So uh, in Winnipeg, maybe even a little more than that during the winter. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so it makes sense to map that out. And uh, this pilot, I won't get into the weeds too much, but this was sponsored by U.S. Department of Commerce, uh, NIST, uh, Institute of uh, Standards and Tech. And the whole idea was to basically start with point clouds, interpret features like walls, doors, and rooms, generate uh, IFC based on that, and then from IFC to city GML and ultimately to indoor GML, and all using different extensions, so around public safety, because the focus was to support first responders. And uh, so there was a public safety application domain extension for CDGML, as well as an indoor GML extension. Um, I won't get into too much detail on, on the pilot, uh, just to say that we did, we saw these pilots, so we, we like the pilots uh, because they tend to work with relatively mature standards and then um, you know, FME is just a great tool to, you know, do ad hoc transformations as well as, as build um, uh, prototypes and services. 
So in this case, we helped jumpstart the whole process. Uh, Victoria Airport generously has provided uh, some of their data uh, for IMDF uh, as, as a, a example data set. And so we were able to seed the pilot by converting that to um, CGML. There's the result there. All right, so uh, let's get into some of the meat of using CDGML as that exchange format. Um, and uh, so indoor pilot was a good example of that. So here's the source IFC. And uh, you can see, you know, it's a fairly detailed model of a school. And we've got both the, all of the surfaces, let's say like the, the walls, doors, and, and ceiling, as well as the spaces. And the spaces are key for, for navigation. And you can see a lot of the attribution there on the different properties. This is the transformation workspace. And uh, I didn't, you know, we won't get into too much detail here, but at this level, I just wanted to highlight a few things for, for the, um, those of you who, want, who, who are interested in some of what's going on under, under the hood here. Uh, the geometry part extractor, <clears throat> there's some key here is to basically simplify and, and clean that geometry. <clears throat> so the geometry part extractor uses a tool uh, that we call gQuery or geometry xQuery. And that's the expression to filter out all we want are elements that are named body. And then we convert that to BREP solid composite surface, get the surface normal. And with the surface normal, we can filter out everything but walls or everything but floors or ceilings, depending on what the destination feature type is. So, uh, you know, um, this this deck and documentation is available later, you know, if some of those um, procedures sound like it might be useful for you. And this is a similar uh, work uh, workflow. This is for the uh, ge convert geometry custom transformer that we made. And so it's um, similar to what I just said, but it also has some aggregation and geometry refiner in it. And so there's the output uh, CDGML. And I'll show you that in Data Inspector. So this is the input IFC. And you can see here, if I can turn on, there's the spaces, for example. And uh, then we, we convert that to CDGML. And so you can see we preserve, I mean, ultimately the goal here was we wanted to also bump this down the chain into indoor GML. And so we didn't need to preserve absolutely everything, but we have all the spaces, doors, and anything that's of significance for, for um, navigation. And then the workflow uh, to do that is here. And so, uh, yeah, we, we can look at this later if, in Q&A. Uh, one of the other tricks you'll see, and this is, we have this on knowledge base, is generating this parent-child lookup. And that works in, in tandem with this get parent, get grandparent ID. So uh, real quick, typically in IFC, you've got essentially a grandparent-parent-child relationship, where in, in CityGML, we just have parent-child. So it's, we basically have this intermediary let's say, uh, window, and then connects to opening, connects to wall, or associates with wall, whereas in CDGML, window just associates to the wall. So um, a lot of that is not just converting the geometry, but also maintaining the relationships of all those, you know, with those IDs. All right. So I won't, yeah, I think I've talked enough about geometry. Uh, schema transformations, again, not getting too far into the weeds, but FME has great tools for doing both attribute value and feature type mapping or even conditional mapping. And so the nice thing about moving from one standard to another is it's, it's a constrained problem. Uh, so you, this may be a fair bit of work to set up one time, but because they're you don't have a moving target at either end, it'll just work and you can actually leverage this in other workflows. 
and then just some indoor navigation stuff we did by generating a mesh that supported uh, or you know this uh, sort of yeah trans transportation network that we could then use to support the uh, shortest path for let's say evacuation so that's probably enough on indoor uh, a few words about city gmail to json um let me just check the time here i might pop this up later um but just just a few ideas here on uh, i was playing around with this uh, the last day or two uh, so we do have a simplified property of geometry model we tend to have flatten things a little bit and then wall walls roofs and and uh, floors now get you just become building parts that are sort of nested within the building itself and so you have to maintain some of these linkages uh, so instead of gmail parent id you have the city json parents and then you also the building will point to its children with city json children so you kind of have to build up uh, those associations and here is a uh, city gmail to geodatabase workflow and uh, uh, initially uh, i was hoping to to write to geopackage but geopackage does not have uh, CD support so you do need the the open api version of geodatabase does not support uh, geodd multi-patch but uh, the, the full um, Esri version of the reader writer does. So you basically have to use a geometry coarser into composite surface to support multi patch. And then there's some tricks here uh, with bulk, bulk attribute renamer to convert dots to underscores. And if I have time at the end, I, I want to show you a trick about how to use the geometry property extractor. So that when you're when you're moving between um, very rich object-oriented models where you have a lot of traits so traits are essentially the attributes on the geometry when you're moving between that and gis you have to extract those properties and so if you say prefix yes it will automatically uh, extract all those properties but then you still have to use an attribute exposer uh, to show them so we'll look at that a little bit later and so this is a data set that i loaded into geodatabase and that's what it looks like in the uh, geodatabase so yeah. Nice. So moving on, let's have a quick look at some uh, a mention of some of our partners and some of some pretty cool use cases. And then I'll come back to uh, the demos as we have time. Mm -hmm. um, it, it actually just just a quick little pause there. Were there any burning questions there, Trent or Don, uh, that that uh, we might want to address before I jump into? Uh, some partners and success stories. Uh, let me look. I did. We did. We have been. We have been answering a, a, a number of them for sure. One of okay. them was, um, you know, about the ADEs. You had a list of ADEs there, and um, yeah. and that was by no means um, meant to be. Um, no, there's no. I didn't bother putting a. Example. Yeah. Yeah, that's just an example. Um, yeah. Certainly, yeah. we've had a lot of people using the utility ADE, noise ADE. Yeah. Yeah, and energy. Um, so there's a lot of them out there because we dynamically, yeah. uh, run, you know, interpret based on application schema. Any well-formed ADE that's that that follows the city GML extension standard, we should just support it out of the box. So um, if you do have yeah. an ADE we don't support, let me know. Yeah. So. And, um... Yeah, there's other questions about, geez, there's lots of great demos and stuff here. Will we be able to download them? Um, and uh, and the answer to that, of course, is yes. At the, Towards the end of this webinar, there's links to you being able to download examples. And you're going to still have, a, you're going to talk about the hub, which is coming up. Yes, yeah. that's coming up pretty quick. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, certainly uh, the deck and most of these examples will be available. Uh, let me just have a quick look at, at some of these resources here. So here's a good article about City Gmail to I3S. So yep. uh, you know, our, both Conterra and our, uh, Esri have been active in that. Yeah. And uh, the City Gmail importer. And uh, 
yeah, here's there's some good articles here about uh, how CGML has been integrated with ArcGIS. Uh, yeah, by one of our great partners. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I did want to highlight a couple of examples here from our partners and the and use cases. And all those, all those from Esri and Autodesk, um, that's based on FME technology, right? So that's an important point. Yes, yeah, yeah, that, that's an yeah. important point to yeah. highlight. So Esri has a data interoperability extension and um, and anything, you know, importing and working with GML is using FME technology. So there you go, yeah. Yeah. So one example of that, that is this VC warehouse or virtual city systems. And so if I pop over here to this download portal, I can just zoom in and I can select an area of interest. And then just, uh, I have to change this to LED2, put in my email address, there's no big secret. And then I can choose, let's say, I, you know, you got Quada 3D PDF. I could just choose City GML, yeah, and just say, oh yes, I want terrain, or what you do or don't want. Yes, I want textures. And then uh, once you accept uh, the terms of use, you send the request, and that goes off to M uh, FME server, packages up the data, and sends it back. And I have something similar. Uh, this is very cool. This is for all of Germany. And um, uh, Kantera has been developing this. This is not a, like the, the Berlin one's publicly accessible. This one's not. This is meant uh, for sort of specialized use cases for things like um, insurance and yeah. uh, planning. And so you can basically select an area, do something similar, and, and uh, download it. It's this, you can see the interface is all in, in German here. Right, but, right. And it's for all of yeah. Germany? This is for all of Germany. Apparently, there's 50 million <laughs> buildings. So it's just pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. The level of detail. And again, FME is underneath. Um, yeah, FME? this was ultimately based on City GML, but of course, at the back end, it's not City yeah. GML now, right? Because it has to Absolutely. be. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah, and it does show that you know City GML is use is you know adds huge value in the real world, right? This isn't just um, you know um, academic or anything like this. It's, it's being used to solve real problems, so that's um, important for you know everyone to to know. Yeah. So just a few other examples here. That was, that was the Berlin 3D City Download Portal. There's a number of other portals. I think Rotterdam has one, and uh, the city of Karlsruhe uh, and uh, New York City with our partner AppGeo. So I'll just flip through some of these. So that's just a few more notes on that new building information service that uh, Kantera is is uh, building right now. Kind of hot off the press. So that's built on top of our scene. Uh, and it's based on a 3D city model, which ultimately is based on the city Gmail standard. And uh, yeah, I mentioned some of the use cases, insurance, planning, and telecom. Um, so this is a, a graphic from uh, Virtual City Systems showing how they you know, build all their stuff based on, uh, on an FME server core that allows them to provide, uh, like you saw for Berlin, uh, all those different outputs. So you can choose those formats and uh, you know zoom in. It, it's, it's actually pretty impressive the uh, response time on that. So I think if I go in here now, I've already got the email, and it says there's your download. So yeah. the only trick I found here is I had to copy and paste that uh, into another tab for some reason. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There. That's it. So you can see it says FME came right from there and Great. it's already done. All right. Yeah, that's great. And uh, I got to get back into the presentation here. So that's one of the one of the Berlin uh, data sets near Brandenburg Gate there, and you can see the quality of that data is is very high considering you're providing that for an entire city. 
So this is a little bit about AppGeo and their work with New York City. And uh, so they, the, the IT department, <clears throat> I guess it's called DOITT, they needed a way to provide access to uh, a million buildings in 3D. And so obviously the obstacle there was just that, just dealing with that volume and also some data quality challenges. And so they use FME to, the solution was using FME to, to render those in, in city GML. And they also have a iterative process to continually evaluate the quality of that city GML and generate QA reports. So, you know, kind of the, the, the less snazzy uh, work behind the scenes, any of these systems you look at, you really need to think about uh, quality control, quality assurance in order for this to work. Uh, you get enough bad data in there and it'll knock your system down. So ultimately they've got uh, 3D models with planimetric data available for the entire city. And this is a similar kind of flow for Karlsruhe. They developed this a long time ago but they've been adding to it all along and enriching um, their set of tools and uh, what they have available. All, to, all of this is kind of built on the city GML data model and allows, allows uh, citizens as well as planners internally to access the property register. Now, uh, I, I think this is a great thing I came across on the hub. And yeah. so I really wanted to highlight this. So, Basically, um, the virtual city systems and uh, Conterra have partnered to put together uh, this these uh, a set of templates on on uh, me Hub. So do check that out. Basically, the whole idea here is they have uh, templates for workflows. Let's say, for example, city GML to three D PDF and yeah. uh, I think there is one specifically, yeah, create a simple city. So this is really the one I should have linked to. I'll, I'll put that link in there because that's kind of like the landing page for them. It sort of explains the overall rationale. And this actually gives you a template for creating a, a very simple uh, city. And so if you're just getting started with working with city GML, there's some great resources here as well as, uh, you know, support. Yeah, and um, certainly um, we encourage everybody to, you know, use the hub no matter what you're doing with FME. Um, Dean just showed some great examples of where our partners have put up some super valuable material that can just save you so much time. And they're templates, so they're samples to really get you started, but they can save so much time. So it's a really, really example of uh, good work by um, a couple of our really great partners. Yeah, and the hub is a, just a great resource in general, yeah. and, and those of you in the user community can feel free to publish there as well. So it's not yeah. just us or our partners, but regular, yeah. you know, regular users are are publishing stuff there. So a few uh, tips and tricks to keep in mind. Um, I have been using FME 2022 beta, sort of on the edge of my seat here, just <laughs> living on yeah. the edge, you can say, uh, for some of my uh, for for data inspector because it does load that Montreal data set twice as fast, for example. Yeah. Um, when you're going yeah. to downstream ap applications, you have to think carefully about how you're gonna simplify your geometry. <clears throat> and um, yeah, maybe we get to the q and A. I'll try to show you how I did that uh, geometry yeah. part. Yeah. So thing. anybody who wants to try the beta, you can download it for free and give it a go. Let us know if you find anything, it is beta. So we really appreciate anything you find that you like, don't like. Um, but the performance is one thing that I'd say we take really seriously and every release um, we strive to be um, faster than the previous one. We can't guarantee everything's gonna be twice as fast. Some things are much faster, but um, we definitely don't want anything to be, be slower. So let us know. And it's not only faster, we are also reducing the memory usage too. So we got those two things going on at the same time where typically anybody knows, typically it's a trade-off. You can get things faster with more memory, whereas we're striving to get things faster with less memory. It's because data set sizes are just exploding. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah and in, in terms of dealing with large data sets, uh, this is just a general best practice is add, add one, work on one feature type at a time. You can sort of disable everything else and just run one or two feature types just to kind of minimize your memory footprint. 
And um, you can also look at well-known, like well-structured data sets and figure out what the structure is if you're, when you're trying to write. Um, yeah. And I'm, I've all, you've got to, in terms of the relationships and properties, I won't get into the weeds here, but this talks a bit about the relationships between uh, parent and child using Gmail ID and Gmail parent ID. Uh, so that those are key as well as the city Gmail feature role and figuring out what um, uh, city Gmail LOD name you're using. So you have to, this has to comply with the standard, you know, LOD two solid, you know, that would be X replaced with a number and make sure you use the right case because bounded by with capital B is different than small. So you, you yeah. don't get the exact match it won't work this is just a quick word about configuring if you happen to have dedicated graphics uh this is for configuring fme to support that you can go into for example nvidia has a control panel where you can select your application in this case data inspector and set it to always use your nvidia processor and uh, that should help improve your performance a bit yeah so this is just a list of resources i'm not going to go through all of these um, so I want to get to some Q&A, but we've got tutorials. The 3D tutorial has a number of city Gmail examples, as does the BIM tutorial. And, um, you know, there's the, some documentation and landing page. And then these are resources, uh, including other, uh, some from our partners. This one was, is a great resource just for city Gmail for all over the world. So you can just click on a country here. That's where I got the Montreal data. So. Um, that awesome city Gmail, you know, check that out. And we've got a blog that's going to come out any any day now, and we'll probably we'll give you a link to that probably in the, mm -hmm. the follow-up mm -hmm. email. Yeah. And so just to wrap up, uh, a couple of conclusions and trends. Uh, we do see a lot of convergence in the uh, 3D domain, be it uh, web tiles, i3s, gaming, simulation. And so city Gmail sort of feeds into that whole mix. Yeah. Um, and there's lots of work going, sorry, Dean, there's lots of work going yeah, on yeah. with, with cesium. So anybody using cesium do reach out to us and um, we can get you on the, you know, the tester and get the latest technology that's probably coming 2022.1. So that puts it, um, summer time frame. but uh, we can do cesium now, but we're just, you know, taking it to the next level. Yeah. So, yeah. Improving our, our optimizing our output basically. Yeah, that's right. And uh, you know, there's a lot going on in the in the world of geo BIM, and that's kind of the interface between JIS and BIM. And and uh, City GML is in the midst of that, but we also support things like Infra GML just mm -hmm. through the GML core, or similar to what I, I mentioned for City GML three. Uh, we didn't really have time to dive too far into sort of the enterprise-wide integration. We showed some examples of FME server geoportals, but even across the enterprise, um, something like CDGML could be used to integrate uh, 3D geospatial data across systems. So keep that in mind. Ultimately, scalability and automation are key. So whatever you end up building, uh, you know, you have to make sure that You've got the tools that, that can scale and automate, and certainly FME takes you a long way to get there. And ultimately, there's also a lot of demand for um, 3D city data. Uh, you know, 2D is just is just not enough for a lot of applications. You know, if you have a flood, you need to know how far up the building is. Is is the building going to be flooded, and do we need to evacuate? It? So just to wrap up. Um, open standards such as uh, City Gmail, City JSON are really essential to the that whole concept or evolution and, and making that idea of digital twin a reality. Uh, digital twin is a great idea, but if you don't have the tools that can extract uh, and transform the data into a rich model, uh, then you don't have anything to build your twin with. So. Um, I think FME does goes a long way to support that. Um, remember that City Gmail is an exchange format, so it's not opt optimized for, you know, thin clients or for storage. So you need to be able to transform in order to feed those, and uh, and and also have 
have something at the back end like a spatial database. Um, we believe that a model-based ETL approach gives you the, your best control over the semantics and the geometry of, of a complex data structure like CityGML. And um, yeah, that allows you to define transfer model, models between all your the different applications and standards that you need to work with. So collaboration is really important, we feel. So that's why we participate with the OGC and with Building Smart and Inspire. And uh, so those standards allow us to more closely collaborate and I think uh, the user community at large benefits from that. And uh, so we are always looking to engage with, with users and with um, um, you know designers in the BIM, 3D and GIS communities. So please reach out to us if, if there's something you think we're missing or something we can improve on. And ultimately, we, we do like to have an enterprise automation approach to this whole concept of digital twin life cycle. So whether you're generating, extracting, converting data, or doing validation updates or publishing it, um, you know, we, we can help you. And there's a lot of cool things coming. So whether it's indoor mapping or underground AR, uh, you know, yeah. we're, we're trying to stay ahead of the curve for you to give you yeah. the tools you need. Yeah. Anything yeah. you wanted to add there on the conclusions there, Don? No, I mean, not well. I'll say no, and then I'll say, and then I'll say a few things. Yeah. So, um, so no, great stuff, Dean. There's been some really great questions going by on I3S and some workflows, and um, so we will follow up. We want to understand all the workflows when, you know, things things don't, um, you can't take it to, to completion. This is a work in progress, as you can imagine, and um, and so we're excited by this technology, 3D, CityGML, CityJSON, IFC. Um, all anything 3D. So do continue the discussion. This is really just part of the discussion with you. We in no means um, think this is the end. And um, and by reaching out to us, you can help us be be better. But no, this is it's it's a super exciting um, area, Dean. And this has been just great. Yeah. A word about the upcoming UC, Don. Or I think we're we're still yeah. On so we are crossing our fingers. This has been twice. Um, delayed. So initially it was in 2020, um, and then obviously the pandemic happened. So we pushed it back, you know, first to 2021, and now in 2022. But we're feeling pretty good about August. We expect well over um, a thousand people there, um, and we'll be talking about everything data integration. So there'll be FME users there, um, and just data integration, and people who love data will come to this conference and it'll be a great conference to talk about all the challenges and all the things we want to do with data. So if you have a story you want to present, that would be awesome. Just click there or you can um, register is, as well. So and, yeah, um, and, and I so, think we extended that deadline by a few days. So you still have yeah, but, uh, yeah. Yep. get your presentations. In. We'll see, but that was mostly driven by the world tour. So I expect that after the world tour, we will probably have another call for papers on the um, the UC is people I talk to a lot of people want to come um, but with travel right now and just where we are in this whole pandemic there's some um, hesitation and so we're we're working we're working through that as well so it is a very uncertain time so um, yeah So there's lots of other webinars uh, at safe.com and also uh, lots of resources in the knowledge base. Any any questions that really jumped out at you, Don or, or Trent, that I don't know if we can address in the short time we have? Uh, I'm happy. We're happy to hang around a couple minutes past the hour uh, in case there's, yeah. those, there's anybody who needs to go. I do appreciate your time that you spent with us. Yeah, no, there's some. Um... I think we answered them all. There was, um, you know, some folks who are really just starting, and so they're excited, you know, to um, for to, to help us get them going. The FME Hub is a great resource, and um, you know, like some folks have asked for tutorials and things like that, and you shared um, a great number of resources. And um, and again, take a look, and if there's a tutorial missing or something that that you don't um, see, that you, oh, geez, I just wish those safe guys. Um, and girls had that. Um, just let us know, and we're constantly producing content for for the community out there, driven by what we think the community wants and for what the community asks for. So, 
Um, yeah, I, I do have a good question Europe, there, Don. Most, go ahead, Dean. Yeah, I was just going to say, I saw a question there uh, from Carolyn about uh, CityGML3. So thanks for your, your interest. Uh, we're working on that right now. And, uh, you know, the XNL team is is right on top of that. And in fact, I'm, I am I participate in the OGC uh, CityGML uh, SWIG, the Standards Working Group. So yeah. we have the latest schemas. It's it's not actually officially released yet as a standard, but it should be uh, probably in the next member meeting. And so we're we're probably in line with supporting that within a quarter or so. So yeah, it's yeah. Coming, it's coming very soon. Yeah, and really the last thing I want to say is just you know thanks for all the partners. This is a collaborative process, and we've really tried to highlight you know just some of the folks we've worked with and you know you know virtual city systems comes to mind conterra comes to mind um delft the folks at delft um you know yeah. um yeah yeah and, and geonova uh, as well wanna, i've worked with them They're, oh sorry go ahead i was just saying geonova uh you know yeah. thomas colby yeah. all, all the there's a, there's a whole great team yeah. lots of people yeah. across europe there predominantly but also yeah. now um, yeah. like apgeo in north america yeah. So no matter where you are, we can um, help you as well as get you in touch with experts in this area that are in the same time zones and close and close to you. We definitely this is a big challenge, industry challenge, and we just enjoy working with everybody. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks, Dean. I mean, it really is, um, you know, for me, it's really an honor and just to, you know, sit back and enjoy and you know all the great work that you do and have it all have it all pulled together it's um it really is um you know just just so great and um so great working with with you and you know our team supporting you know the things that you do it is important work we take it very seriously but it goes without saying if we didn't have dean we wouldn't he, he's the he's the linchpin that really really keeps us you know t connected to all these folks and it requires a, a special a special mind to do this. Like this is complex. You got to be able to go deep and talk really high level. And Dean Dean can do both. So yeah. So thanks for that. And Elizabeth, well, thanks so much. Yeah, yeah no, it's a lot of fun, Don. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Awesome. And I did want to quickly mention at the end here, we do have a webinar survey, a four multiple choice question survey option at the end that will launch. And we really appreciate any feedback you can provide on the webinar this morning. We're always looking for ways to continually improve our program. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye for now. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.